Vincent Trocek enjoyed a career season in 2023-2024. Will he regress, or can the Rangers do it all center, perform at the same level this season? You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 1126 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. And we are, of course, Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the everydayers, you guys know the drill at this point. We do this every offseason. We're right in the middle of doing it uh, this offseason as well. We're basically just going through our offseason series where we take a look at every single Rainer that we project to be on the Rainers opening night roster for 2024-2025 and talk about the best and worst case scenarios. And if you're new around here, it's a great time to join. We're building toward, obviously, uh, the first game of Rainer hockey for the upcoming season. We got the preseason just barely over a month away at this point. So really some exciting times and continuing to break down, uh, like I said, every player on this Rainier roster and the best and worst case scenarios for all of them. And today we're going to take a look at the projected second line center, Vincent Trocek. We've already covered the entire first line, uh, Kreider, Mika Smith. And then we've also covered our Timmy Panarin in a recent episode. Obviously these lines are not set in stone, but this is kind of uh, the, the, template that we're going with, uh, you know, for the purposes of this offseason drill here. And one more thing that I'm going to do at the end of today's episode, we're going to play a conversation that I had with Gil Martin from Locked On NHL, just talking all things Ranger hockey and what to expect this upcoming season. But with no further ado, let's go ahead, talk about Vincent Trocek, and we'll start with the worst case scenarios. We'll end on the best case scenarios because it's more fun that way. And with, uh, you know, the glass half full and end on the positive things. But worst case scenario for Vincent Trocek, the first thing that kind of popped into my head here was that he could have some offensive regression after what was a career season. It wasn't just a career season offensively. It was basically by just about every metric you could go with. Um, but obviously, you know, the points were hand in hand with that. And he uh, was very productive for the Rangers this past season from an offensive perspective. And, you know, it's interesting. You look at his career, his career totals, you know, season by season, his point total really seems to fluctuate from one year to the next. And obviously part of that is caused by in recent seasons, we had some COVID shortened seasons, but just in terms of point per game, if we look at his last seven seasons, we'll go from least recent to most recent. I'll run through all these and you guys will have an idea just how much his point totals can really jump around a little bit. So 75 points in 82 games with the Panthers. Then the following year, just 34 points in 55 games with the Panthers. The season after that, 38 points in 62 games in a season that he split between the Panthers and the Canes. Then after that, back to almost a point per game here, 43 points in 47 games with the Canes. Then he falls again, 51 points in 81 games uh, again with the Canes. Then his first season with the Rangers, 64 points in 82 games. And this last season, a big jump again, 77 points in 82 games. So his point totals by the season, tend to jump around a lot more than most players do. Uh, there's a lot of factors there, too, of course. You know, that's uh, uh, see a career there where he's he's splitting it between a lot of different teams. You know, he's on the Panthers, then he's on the Canes, then he's on the Rangers. Uh, how much ice time was he getting per night in any given season? How much time was he getting on the power play? Who were his line mates? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But his point totals do fluctuate quite a bit from season to season. But for all the reasons I just mentioned there, and you know, you guys saw it for yourself, the, the way the points tend to jump around with him, Trocek not hitting 77 points again for the Rangers this upcoming season, that is not really a difficult scenario to imagine. Although, I will say this, he is with our Timmy Panarin, and we know, everybody knows, everybody that's followed this Ranger team for any amount of time knows the last half decade that our Timmy Panarin has been here. Anybody that plays on the line with our Timmy Panarin inevitably gets the Panarin bump when it comes to their offensive stats, Vincent Trocek certainly did not seem to be any sort of an exception last season. And I think you're looking at a situation where his points are probably going to go down slightly, but he will remain a uh, tremendously impactful and important player for this Ranger team, even in a worst case scenario. I think also in a worst case scenario for Vincent Trocek, you could see a situation where he, through mostly no fault of his own, loses his spot 
on the Rangers' top power play unit. I don't think this is going to happen, at least not to start the season, but it could eventually come to fruition at some point during the 82-game campaign. And the reason for that, again, it's not really Trocek's fault, but it's the very simple fact that Alexi Lafreniere is knocking on the door. We saw him break out last season. I think another jump is definitely uh, very likely for Lafreniere for this upcoming season. And you've got five excellent Ranger power play players and the, the, we have six of them right now, and there's only five spots available on the top uh, New York Ranger power play unit. And you can file that under good problem to have. But if you look at the way the power play is set up, if Lafreniere does eventually bump one of those guys from the top power play unit down to the second power play unit, process of elimination, it's probably going to be, be Vincent Trocek. Uh, we know for sure it's not going to be Panarin. It's not going to be Fox. I don't think it'll be Kreider. They like him out there for, you know, the net front presence and all those deflections that he can come up with because of Benajad. It's not going to be him either. He's somebody that uh, has obviously been a very effective power play performer for the Rangers over the last however many seasons that he's been here. And on top of that, you know, you've got the one-timer from Mika Zibanejad. Now, there are times where the Rangers fall a little too in love with feeding Mika Zibanejad for one-timers when they're on the power play, but it is a weapon. It is something that, you know, should be used from time to time. And even the Mika naysayers, the people that aren't necessarily the biggest fans of him, their biggest complaint is that he gets all his points on the power play. So even that group has to admit that Mika Zibanejad is an important uh, player when it comes to the Ranger power play. So, for all those reasons, if Lafreniere does end up on the Ranger top power play unit, I just think process of elimination, it's probably going to be Trotrick that gets bumped down. And again, it won't really be his fault. It'll just be kind of a necessary change uh, for the Rangers. I think also in a worst case scenario, Vincent Trocek, plain and simple, just continues to take too many penalties. Uh, this past season that just concluded... 55 penalty minutes. The season before that, 58 penalty minutes. That was, of course, his first season with the Rangers. The year before that, what turned out to be his last season with the Canes, 78 penalty minutes for Vincent Trocek. It's just too much. Um, the only Rangers last season with more penalty minutes than Vincent Trocek were Jacob Truba with 73 Matt Rempe, who had 71 penalty minutes in only 17 games. And, of course, obviously, these penalty minutes also include fights. And quite a bit of that happened with Matt Rempe there. Uh, he had, you know, he's kicked out of a bunch of games too. So 71 minutes and 17 games for Rempe. After that third was Will Cooley with 56 penalty minutes, which kind of surprised me. I mean, I didn't really recall him taking uh, an exorbitant amount of penalties, but I guess he did because he had 56 uh, penalty minutes last season, did Cooley. And then fourth was Vincent Trocek, one minute behind with 55 minutes. And really, it's not just the quantity of the penalties that Vincent Trocek takes, it's the quality. Because he probably as much, or maybe even more than any player on this team, when he takes penalties, it very often is a situation where it just does not need to happen. The Rangers will have the puck in the offensive zone, and he'll hook somebody or they'll be in the neutral zone and he'll take somebody down when he doesn't really need to do it. Look, penalties are going to happen. We know that. You can understand, though, when whether it's Trocek or anybody else, if the Rangers are playing such and such opponent and that opponent's got a really strong uh, offensive possession going and they're buzzing and they're having all these great scoring opportunities, at that point, you can understand somebody hooking somebody down, holding somebody, trying to break up the scoring opportunity. You, you can live with that. But the ones that Trocek takes... Far more often than not, it feels like they're completely avoidable, completely unnecessary. And I don't think it's a situation where Trocek is being lazy, because you do see that with certain players. You know, they, they don't want to move their feet, and they just reach out, and they hook somebody down, and they get called for a penalty. It's not that. It's just, it's not a lack of hustle. It's not a lack of effort. It's just a lack of discipline, I think, from Vincent Trocek, or maybe thinking that, you know, he can get away with a little bit more then he's going to be able to get away with. You know, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but in a worst case scenario, uh, that continues to be you know something of an Achilles heel for Vincent Trocek. So we're going to keep everything rolling. In just a second here, I want to switch our attention to the best case scenarios for Vincent Trocek. Once again, coming off a career season here, looking to build on that and continue to be a, a big time player for this New York Ranger team. So we'll discuss all the best case scenarios for Vincent Trocek in just a second. All right, we just want to take a minute to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships, is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. 
With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at all the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP, bring home those huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here on Locked On New York Rangers. Big shout out to the everydayers, as always, for sticking with this podcast throughout you know, every peak and valley of the NHL calendar. We're going to be doing a bunch more episodes going forward just like this, taking a look at every player that we project to be on the Ranger opening night roster, going through the best and worst case scenarios. Going to look to line up some guests uh, in the coming episodes as well. That's always a lot of fun. Uh, but for right now, let's go ahead and keep talking about Vincent Trojek and more specifically, the best case scenarios for Vincent Trocek for this upcoming season. I think in a best case, Vincent Trocek just continues to do what he does. He continues to be Vincent Trocek. Uh, I was a big fan of his before he ever even came to the Rangers. He was one of my favorite uh, non-Rangers in the league. So when I found out that the Rangers were looking to maybe sign him, and then of course the deal does eventually occur, uh, I was thrilled. And and there were a lot of people nitpicking it. Uh, it's a little pricey or it's a little bit of a long contract. But yeah, the, the second part of that I agree with at least a little bit. Uh, but it's crazy. You know, I used to say Vincent Trocek was a B-plus at everything, and I realized after this past season that I had definitely sold him short. This is just somebody that you want on the ice in all situations of every kind of a game, which is probably the best compliment I can possibly pay uh, to Vincent Trocek. There's just never a spot in any game, any opponent, playoffs, regular season, preseason, that you don't want this guy on the ice. Uh, more often than not, good things are going to happen. He can score. You know, he wins a, a boatload of faceoffs. He hits. He's an elite defensive forward. He got some selkie votes this past season. Uh, phenomenal chemistry with Panarin and Lafreniere. And honestly, I, I think starting to establish himself as one of the leaders of this team. More on that in just a little bit. He doesn't have a letter, at least not yet. But regardless, I, I think when you watch Vincent Trocek interact with his, uh, his teammates, it, it's pretty obvious that he's a well-respected player and uh, somebody that seems to be, and we don't see everything that happens behind the scenes, but seems to be emerging as one of the leaders of this Rangers squad. I think also in a best case scenario, Vincent Trocek continues to bring the clutch factor because when you look at the playoffs this past year, and of course the Rangers, you know, they beat the Caps, they beat the Panthers, get knocked out in six games by the Panthers. But outside of Igor Shesterkin, Vincent Trocek was the best player in the playoffs for the New York Rangers. I'm not even really sure it can be debated. You know, stats as far as like goals and assists, that would suggest that it's at least somewhat close, but... Honestly, I, I don't know that it was. Trocek was, I think, a little bit more consistent than a lot of the other Ranger, you know, big name players. Even the guys that had a lot of points, you know, Mika had a lot of points, Panarin had a lot of points, Kreider had a good amount of points, and uh, that's all well and good. But Vincent Trocek was the guy bringing it and playing playoff hockey every single night. He ends up in the 16 games with eight goals and 12 assists. Of course, he had the uh, double overtime game two winner against the Canes, just an absolutely huge goal in that series. Really felt like the Rangers needed to win that one, even though they were up one game to nothing. Uh, and he started the playoffs with a seven-game point streak. And I realized four of those games are against the Caps, and they're not very good. But regardless, it's the playoffs. You got to bring it. You got to perform. And started the playoffs again with a seven-game point streak. And five of those seven games were multiple point performances for Vincent Trocek. So the dude just hit the ground running. Uh, he goes out there and he plays hungry. You know, he's just a heck of a player. I think also in a best-case scenario for Vincent Trocek, we're looking at a couple of more greasy goals from him this season. You know, he gets a couple of those. The Raiders, honestly, could use a few more of those in general. You know, when you look at this roster, who's going to get the dirty goals, the stuffing goals, the, the goals on a scramble in front of the net? I mean, Kreider can do that. Obviously, he sets up shop in front of the net in the crease and everything, and he'll clean up uh, some loose change in the crease every once in a while. Lafreniere, I think, can get to the net every every now and then, too. You know, he'll have a strong drive to the net, get to some of the dirty areas. And I guess Trocek, and um, that's about it. Yeah, I, I don't know who else. That That's another reason why I really wanted the Rangers to find, like, a gritty player to play on the top line with Mika and Kreider, but they went with Riley Smith, who is a good player. I'm just not sure he's the player that the Rangers needed uh, for that role. I don't want to get too off track here, but the bottom line is the Rangers could use a, four, a few more greasy goals. Trocek is capable of doing that, and in a best-case scenario, he chips in with a few more of those in this upcoming season, and specifically the postseason. Also in a best-case scenario, Vincent Trocek continues to be 
Nothing short of a dominant special teams player. As we've documented on here, the Rangers this past season, number three in the NHL in power play, number three in the NHL in penalty kill. And Trochik has had a pretty big hand in that, a huge hand, I would say. Uh, 11 power play goals and 13 power play assists this past season. And there's a lot of Ranger penalty kills where he's out there for a good chunk of time. And a lot of them will often start or maybe not start, but at some point, you know, there's another face off in the, the power play for the opposing team and Trocek will win it. And then we get a clear and that's a good way to, to start any defensive zone face off uh, when you're a man down. So good stuff there. Trocek, no reason to believe he won't continue to be a very effective player on both special teams units for the New York Rangers. I think also Trocek in the best case firmly establishes himself as one of these steals around the NHL. I mentioned the contract earlier to get a little bit more specific here, seven years at $5.625 million dollars per season. Last year, what he did, he was an absolute bargain at that price. And if he plays anywhere near the level this year that he did last year, then yes, that is not an exaggeration. Vincent Trocek will rightfully be seen as one of the absolute steals around the NHL. Now, will he still be a steal in the last year or two of the contract? That remains to be seen. He's going to be getting a little bit older at that time, but that's just the price you pay to get somebody under contract for a reasonable amount. I'm sure Vincent Trocek that offseason when he was a free agent had no shortage of suitors, no shortage of teams that were looking to bring him in, but he comes to the Rangers and he's done a heck of a job at a $5.625 million per season. I don't know how many players that, that have been signed as free agents around the league right now are playing at a better clip than that and making less money than that. Maybe there's a few. I mean, I didn't look at the whole list before I hit record here today, but man, I mean, he is one of the absolute bargains in the NHL. And if again, if he has the same type of a season this year that he did last year, um, that will be set in stone. That There will be no more even debating that. That, that will indeed be the fact. Uh, okay, another one here that I really like, the everydayers, you guys will recognize this as well. Uh, big face-off guy, big on winning face-offs. That always plays big in the postseason as well. In a best case scenario, Vincent Trocek gets to 60% for the season on the faceoff circle. There's really no reason to think that this is outside the realm of possibility. He last season was at 58 point something percent, and I'm actually looking it up now. I thought I had it in front of me. I do not. But yeah, last year, 58.7% for Vincent Trocek. That was a new career high. Uh, for his career, he's at 53.4%, but that's an area of his game where he's just gotten better and better and better and better. And like I said, I, I think faceoffs are big. Part of the reason I think they're big is when you win a faceoff, like say you win a defensive zone faceoff, especially in the playoffs. Let, let's use the playoffs as an example. And you're able to work the puck out of your zone and get it clear and get it into the attacking zone. Well, what would have happened if you lost that faceoff? We have no way of knowing. There, there's endless examples like that where you just don't know if you lose this faceoff, does it result in a goal for the opposition? So I'm big on faceoffs. Uh, again, 58.7% last year, and we'll go last couple of years in, you know, from most recent to least recent, 56.1% the year before that, 546 the year before that, and 56% the year before that. So he has really gotten better and better and better as the years have gone on. 60% is really, really difficult to do. But when you see the absolute human cheat code that he was when it came to winning faceoffs last year. I don't think it's impossible. We'll, we'll see how it goes, but I, I think it's at least in the realm of possibility. Unlikely, but certainly possible. Uh, I think also in a best case scenario, and this one's a little bit out there, but you guys got to stay with me for a second. Vincent Trocek gets consideration to be the next captain of the New York Rangers. Now, I have said multiple times throughout this entire Jacob Truba fiasco or saga or whatever word that you want to use that if he ends up staying, Truba that is, if he ends up staying with the Rangers for this upcoming season, I would not mess with anything as far as him being the captain. I would leave the C on him and not pour gasoline on an already burning fire. That That's my opinion. Somebody else might feel a different way. You might want to go in a different direction when it comes to the captain, but... If the Raiders were to do that, if they were to be that bold and they were to take the captaincy away from Jacob Truba, then I think Trocek's the guy. I, I really do. You know, Kreider and Mika, you can always make a case for either one of them, but I feel like if they were going to be the captain, they would have got it right when Jacob Truba did because they had both been a Ranger, you know, longer than Truba had. They went with Jacob Truba instead. Um, I, I think that ship has kind of sailed as far as one of them being the captain. Panarin has said, you know, he doesn't want to be the captain because his, you know, English isn't his first language. So there's that. Um, you know, Barclay Goodrow is gone. 
who else would it? I mean, I guess you could maybe throw Adam Fox out there, possibly. But I, I think, you know, watching Vincent Trocek interact with his teammates and be kind of a vocal leader for this team, I think he's the guy. And honestly, even if it doesn't happen this offseason, maybe next offseason it does. Because Jacob Truba has two years left on his contract. He is not going to be a Ranger after this season. I feel very, very confident saying that. The only way it's possible is if the salary cap uh, ceiling jumps by just leaps and bounds next off season. And all of a sudden you've got a bunch of cap space if you're the Rangers, but I don't see that happening. It'll get a little bump, but Jacob Truba is going to be unaffordable next off season. Uh, when Lafreniere and Igor and Miller and a bunch of other people are free agents and need new contracts. So with that being the case, if the Rangers need a new captain next off season, very good chance that Jacob Truba is the guy. I think maybe Alexi Lafreniere could also be in the running at that time. You know, we'll see, but my money's on Jacob Tru. Uh, no, Jacob Truba is the captain. My money is on Vincent Trocek being the next captain of the New York Rangers. And as far as this year, I don't think the captain sees in the card. Could Vincent Trocek be an alternate captain? I, I think that's at least possible. You know, if you look at the, the lay of the land right now, as of right now, Truba is obviously still the captain. As far as the alternates are concerned, you've got Panarin, Mika, Kreider, and Fox. And those four will likely remain alternates. I don't think you have to reinvent the wheel and cause a bunch of controversy for nothing. But as I mentioned a second ago, they did lose Barclay Goodrow this offseason. So they had five alternate captains last year. You're now down to four. I don't think you really need five alternate captains. I think four is more than enough. But if the Rangers want to go in that direction and they do want to add a fifth alternate captain, Vincent Trojic is probably about as likely as anybody. I'll mention Lafreniere again. I think there's at least a chance of that happening. Um, maybe Ryan Lindgren. You know, that, that that's at least possible. But... The tricky thing with Lindgren is he's on a one-year contract and he's an unrestricted free agent after the season. I think there's a decent chance he moves on. Doesn't mean you can't make him an alternate captain. And maybe, hey, you know what? Maybe I just figured something out. Maybe you can use that as a way to butter up Ryan Lindgren if you want to keep him around on something of a team-friendly deal past this upcoming season. Maybe being an alternate captain wouldn't mean a lot to Ryan Lindgren. I don't know. Every player is different. Um, hard to say for sure. But um, yeah, I think uh, in a best-case scenario for Vincent Trocek, his uh, role as a leader on this team is recognized in the form of a letter on his jersey for this upcoming season. And if not this upcoming season, then certainly the one after that. We're going to keep everything rolling in just a second. I want to go ahead and play uh, the conversation that I had with Mr. Gil Martin of Locked on NHL. Joined him to talk all things New York Rangers, and uh, we will do that in just a second. All right, we just want to take a minute to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch, with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Save up to 60% off. Buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. Save even more when you choose a section and let Game Time choose the seats. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price. Guaranteed. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here on Locked On New York Rangers. Big thanks to you guys, as always, for tuning in. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play the interview that I did as a guest on Locked On NHL. I joined Gil Martin for you know a brief talk about the New York Rangers and everything that's happened this offseason and everything that we have to look forward to for this upcoming season. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, play that interview right now. The New York Rangers won the President's Trophy last year, but they did suffer some losses this offseason, although they also added. Will they be in contention for the President's Trophy again, and more importantly, for the Stanley Cup? John Chick of Locked On Rangers joins us to discuss this next on the Locked On NHL Podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Gil Martin here and welcome everybody to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL Podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On NHL your first listen today. 
Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. It is my pleasure to welcome to the show the host of Locked On New York Rangers, John Chick. And uh, John, it's been an interesting off season so far for the Rangers. A lot of departures uh, and, and most of them expected, but out of all the players who left, which one concerns you the most? Uh, there's nobody I think that's like overly concerning because I think in most cases, most of the players that are now ex Rangers and no disrespect to anybody, you know, I, I think everybody on that roster had a hand in them making it as far as they did uh, this past playoffs, you know, getting into the Eastern Conference final before falling to the Panthers. But I feel like at just about every single position, whether we're talking about, you know, Rosovic, he's going to be replaced probably by Riley Smith. I mean, that kind of seems like uh, it's the way that they're going there and Riley Smith will be in a top six role. You know, if Philip Heal is healthy, then he'll take over for Alex Wenberg. you got Zach Jones stepping into uh, the lineup seemingly as a regular in place of Eric Gustafson. And Barkley Goodrow, that's probably the one downgrade, you know, as the fourth line center going from him to Sam Carrick. But I think with Barkley Goodrow, you know, the cap hit just was a little bit too high for somebody that largely plays in your on your fourth line. I do think of all the departures, maybe you'll uh, miss him the most just because of the intangibles and the fact that it does feel like this guy always steps up come playoff time. You know, he'll have like two or three goals in the regular season and then end up with five or six goals in the playoffs. That's kind of how he how he does it. And uh, does a lot of the little things that maybe fly under the radar, you know, a physical player and somebody that kills penalties as well. So if they're going to miss anybody, and he was an alternate captain on top of all that. So if they're going to miss anybody, I'd say probably Barkley Goodrow. But there's nobody that left that causes like a, you know, a massive hole in the lineup or anything like that. So I, I think they'll be all right with some of the players that they've brought in to, to replace some of those guys that I just mentioned. Yeah, it seems that way. Do you think they're still President's Trophy and Stanley Cup contenders at this point? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I was talking about this on my show where I was comparing uh, this past season's opening night roster to what it looks like it's going to be for this season's opening night roster. And it goes back to what I was just talking about. I think in just about every position, the Rangers, I mean, either the player from last year is still here this year. You know, the core is obviously still intact. So either that's the case or you're in a situation where they've probably upgraded, you know, top line right wing. Again, I, I think that's the best example going from Jack Roslevic to Riley Smith. That to me feels like at least something of an upgrade. I don't think they're like massively better than last year's team and nothing's guaranteed. I mean, they can be better on paper. It might not lead to them having the best record in the NHL again. Uh, the Metro division is always tough. We know that there's no guarantees that they'll repeat there either. But I think on paper, this team has gotten slightly better. I would have liked to have seen them add maybe a little bit more uh, snarl and a little bit more grit to this team. You know, Riley Smith is a fine player, but I would have preferred somebody that, you know, maybe brings a little bit of uh, that mix of skill and toughness to the top line. And, you know, Smith has some skill. He's very good off the rush and all that stuff. And, um, you know, solid player. But I, I feel like there were a couple of guys out there that maybe I would have liked a little bit more um, that end up signing one-year deals, you know, guys like Anthony Mantha, Jason Zucker, I think they might've been better fits, but regardless, um, I'm excited, man. You know, I, I think this championship window is still wide open and something that gives me hope. And I've talked about this in my show is, and again, none of this guarantees anything, but you look at recent NHL history, a lot of teams over the last few years have kind of been knocking on the door and then they finally kicked it down, whether it's the Knights, uh, Tampa Bay lightning times two, you know, they won two Stanley cups, the avalanche for a while were, always, you know, had one of the best records in the league, couldn't really get past the second round. They recently won a Stanley Cup. Uh, if you want to go back a little bit farther, you look at the Capitals. They, they for years, were the team that couldn't do it in the playoffs until they did. So, um, yeah, man, I mean, look, they, they lost the Panthers. Panthers won fair and square. Um, I don't think that series was as one-sided as a lot of people would have you believe. And I think the Rangers are right there and uh, still among the elite teams in this league. Do you think if there is one area you think that this team could tweak whether it's before the season starts or even up until the trade deadline, as of right now, what does that look like? As far as like an adjustment that they would make, I mean, I, I feel like this is their team. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens when the trade deadline rolls around, but you might be in a situation where you get to this year's trade deadline where you're looking to bring in uh, one more big time forward, you know, somebody that can score. Maybe you go in a different direction. Maybe you bring in somebody that can add a little bit more grit to this team. Um, overall though, you know, I, I feel like they've put together a good roster here and I, I don't think any like massive changes are going to happen certainly between now and the start of the regular season. Um, when the trade deadline rolls around, you know, we'll, we'll see who's on the roster and how much cap space accrues. But, um, yeah, I would look for them to be active at the trade deadline and add some complimentary pieces around that time, 
um, you know, wh wh however they're doing. Uh, certainly, I think they'll be in contention and they'll be a team looking to buy. And I, I think, you know, you'll see them pounce at the trade deadline as they have in recent seasons. Any up and coming prospects that you have your eye on in training camp? Yeah, Brandon Offman for sure. Um, I talked about this, I think, on the most recent episode that I did. You know, three Ranger prospects that uh, have the best chance of making an impact on the Rangers for this upcoming season. Brandon Offman, for anybody that might not be familiar with that name, uh, first round pick for the Rangers, I believe number 16 overall a couple of years ago, 2021. And he's a left winger, but he can play a little bit of right wing as well. He was up for three games last year, and then they sent him back down to the AHL. But I think that was always the plan. They just wanted to get him a little bit of a taste of NHL action. He got it last year, and I think this year he'll be given every opportunity to make this team out of training camp. And even if that does not happen, you got to believe that when the Rangers need a spark or they're, they're just looking to – you know, call somebody up if he performs well in the AHL this year, as he did last year. Uh, he'll be one of the first guys that they call. And uh, somebody who, you know, I talked about this a minute ago, but he has that intriguing blend of skill and toughness. This guy is a wrecking ball out there, despite not being, you know, necessarily the biggest player on the ice. And he's got some skill as well. You know, he set the OHL on fire when he was there, uh, put up a bunch of points in this first season with the Wolfpack last year, too. So I think he's the guy. And I'll give an honorable mention also to Brett Berard, former fifth round pick, you know, doesn't have the hype and the, you know, hoopla surrounding him the way that Offman does. But this is a guy that's just progressed really nicely, good all-around game. And again, a little bit of a mix of, uh, you know, the skill and the toughness that I think Ranger fans everywhere like. So he's my honorable mention is Brett Berard. Got to mention this, uh, just announced earlier this week that Sam Rosen, who has been doing Rangers television play-by-play -play for 40 years, is going to be stepping down at the end of this season. Wanted your thoughts about Sam Rosen, his legacy with the Rangers, and, and what – his retirement means to Ranger fans. Yeah, the guy's a franchise icon. I mean, there aren't too many announcers really in hockey or any other sport where you, know, you look throughout the history of broadcasting, no matter how much or how much success, you know, a, an announcer might have, there's always some naysayers. There's always that group of fans that's like, oh, I don't really like that guy or I don't really like that person, right? Uh, it's not really the case with Sam Rosen. I mean, Every once in a while, you'll find a contrarian who is just doing that. They're just going against the grain for the sake of going against the grain. But as far as like universally beloved uh, sports broadcasters, I mean, I feel like he's up there. Ranger fans love him. Uh, he obviously has a lot of passion for his job. He's been doing it, as you mentioned, for 40 years. And we're really going to miss him. You know, he's got some iconic calls. Uh, nobody will ever forget the 94 Stanley Cup where, you know, the waiting is over. The New York Rangers are the Stanley Cup champions, and this one will last a lifetime. I mean, every Ranger fan on the planet can say that verbatim. Uh, another good one was a couple of years ago, double overtime or single overtime against the Pittsburgh Penguins in game seven. But, I mean, he, he was just thrilled about that win as well. And, um, you know, we're, we're certainly going to miss him. But we were talking about this a second ago off air, Gil. I'm glad that at least we know that like, okay, this is going to be his last year. I wouldn't have wanted to see the announcement that like, oh, he's done. He's just not going to come back. Like, at least we know now that we can get used to it. And, um, you know, just just enjoy this last season with Sam Rosen as the play-by-play -play guy uh, for the New York Rangers. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, he, he certainly deserves that victory lap, that send-off. Every time I've met him, he has been a class act and, and, and a great guy. And uh, he is an institution here in the New York area. John, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? Yeah, anywhere you're listening to this or watching this, you can find Locked On New York Rangers there as well. Uh, we're on every audio streaming platform you can think of, also on YouTube. And you can find me on social media on Twitter, at jchick17. Give me a follow, talk some hockey, have some fun, get excited for the season. Definitely looking forward to watching some Ranger hockey. All right. Well, just a month away from training camp. John, thank you so much. All right, thanks for having me, Gil. All right, so big, big thanks to you guys, as always, for tuning into the Locked On New York Ranger podcast. Uh, really means a lot to me, and that you guys stick with Locked On New York Rangers throughout the entire season, off season, the whole nine yards. A uh, couple of announcements here before we call it a day. Reminder for the Fantasy Hockey League, if you played last year, email me, DM me, reclaim your spot. You're back for next season. That's all you got to do for the time being. If you did not play last year, do the same thing. Email me. DM me. We will save your place in line and we'll do everything possible uh, to get you into the fantasy league for this upcoming season. And one more reminder, we're going to be doing an episode in the future where I read all of your stories uh, that describe what you were doing, who you were with, how you reacted when the Rangers scored in overtime 
in this past season's Stanley Cup playoffs. Obviously, there were four different overtime goals scored by the Rangers. They won four games in overtime. So send me your best story from any of those goals. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've done things like this in the past. We covered our Timmy Panarin game seven from a couple of years ago. Heard some of your stories from that. Same thing with Derek Stepan uh, back in 2015 against the Caps. So doing it a little bit different this year, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So Yeah, with all that said, thank you guys as always for tuning in to the Locked on New York Ranger podcast. If you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email, like I said, to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that's at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to the Locked on New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.